Hey guys, welcome back to Mad Moose Barbecue. I'm Zach, and today I just wanted to uh, do an updated review on my thoughts of the Masterbuilt 1050 Gravity Series uh, smoker. So about uh, five months ago, I got this smoker, um, and I did a little bit of a review on it uh, back in June. Those were kind of just my initial thoughts, you know, uh, what I thought about it, you know, after a couple cooks. Well, I've had it for about five months now, so there's just a couple things that. Uh, you know have come up that I'd like to talk about you know if you're about to drop seven eight hundred dollars on a smoker you know you want to know the pros and cons of that smoker so I've done uh, probably I, I can't even tell you probably a hundred cooks at least on this thing um, and it's holding up great you know I can't speak for the 560 so you know I've, I've heard that it's built a little bit uh, less sturdy but I, I can't speak for it specifically this video is for the 1050 um, just a couple of things i want to talk about uh, let's see first off uh, the controller i've never been able to get it to connect like to the wi-fi where i've actually used it but with this particular smoker i just i don't really see the point of it you know i mean i get it you can control the the temperature uh, but other than that you know it's not like you can start the smoker um, from it because you got to light the charcoal anyways and it's not like you can really just, I mean, you can turn it off, but unless you're here to put the slides in, your charcoal's just gonna keep burning up anyways. So I've never even tried to mess with it after the first couple times not getting it to work. It's not a huge deal anyways. I've got my fireboard uh, thermometer that I use to keep track of all the temperatures and stuff. Um, one thing that I have, I guess you could call it a mod. Everybody talks about this smoker needing mods. I don't think it does, uh, but the one thing that I have done since my last video is I just use this Ryobi power inverter uh, and it works fantastic to run this thing. I mean, I've ran it for 14 hours straight and barely put a dent in that battery. So uh, a lot of guys use those uh, little uh, power bank inverters. Those even work. You just have to buy a little uh, adapter. Uh, to connect it so I mean it's really not taking a lot of uh, electricity you're just really running the computer and the fan you know uh, it's not like a pellet smoker where you have an auger going and you know the motor and all that uh, it's just the fan so uh, what else uh, I've since then bought the rotisserie uh, attachment for it I don't have it hooked up right now um, but I've used it a few times and it is great I've put two chickens on it at once um, and didn't have any problems. I absolutely love the rotisserie attachment. I'll probably do a cook uh, pretty soon here. Thanksgiving coming up. Using that, I'm gonna try to put a whole turkey on it. Um, what else? Fuel consumption. Uh, still kind of sucks. I use, I use mostly lump charcoal um, and it, it just, it, it eats it up. It really does. Um, you know, a full hopper, at 275 degrees, probably last you, honestly, six, seven hours uh, at 275. You know, it'll last a little bit longer if you're cooking a little bit slower. Um, but for me, that's not a huge turnoff. I, I, I like the ease still of it. It's nothing compared to a pellet smoker. Shoot, you can do a 40 pound uh, bag in the, the rec tech and that'll last you, you know, damn near 40 hours. So that that is, uh, a con I guess you could say if that kind of thing is gonna bother you but it doesn't really bother me um, what else uh, on the bottom I'm still sometimes getting a little bit of uh, grease leaking down onto the bottom shelf um, again for me it's not that big of a deal um, because it lands on that bottom shelf and you know it makes a mess on the bottom shelf but at least it's not making a mess on the floor um, my dog comes and licks it up anyways uh, what else the Hopper sometimes I think leaks and the uh, fire doesn't go out. You know, as soon as I put the slides in, uh, it takes a little while, which kind of is another fuel consumption issue that I've run into with it. Um, everything inside's been great. Um, I use my fireboard ambient uh, probe and I kind of try to put it next to the built-in probe and it's usually pretty close. It's, it's usually within 10, 
degrees, uh, give or take. A lot of the times it's dead on. So the, uh, the Masterbuilt's ability to keep temperature is really, really good. I've been very impressed with it. Um, I've had not really had any major temp swings unless you're opening and closing the lid, which is gonna happen on any type of uh, smoker at all. So uh, the inside's been great. I love being able to remove the, uh, the grill grates. We have the three racks. Um, you know, you can flip over the bottom grill grates. They're cast iron. One side is for uh, smoking and one side's for searing. That's a cool feature. Uh, the only difference is that one side is kind of flat um, and the other side's more pointy. So, you know, you would sear, you want more surface area when you're searing. So if you're gonna do steaks, uh, you can flip one of the grill grates over to a sear side. You can have the other one on smoke and you could, you know, reverse sear your steak. You could smoke it and then crank the thing up, throw it on the uh, sear side. So I like that feature. That was, uh, that was well thought out. Um, something that uh, I have had issues with is grease fires. Uh, so you really, really have to make sure that if you're going to cook, you know, above like 275 and you haven't cleaned it out, you really, really should clean it out. I've had that issue a couple times now, but again, that's not really the smoker's fault, that's, that's my fault. Uh, but just something to be aware of if you do end up buying the smoker and you're gonna do, you know, if you're gonna go cooking chicken or, uh, you know, steak, something that you're gonna cook it really hot and fast, um, make sure that the inside is cleaned out, get all, get all the grease off the edges and stuff. It's really easy to clean. Um, that's something I like about it. They made it pretty easy to clean. Uh, the drip pan or the drip tray, I guess, that everything falls into is kind of small, so it can fill up quickly. Um, but it, it's pretty easy to, uh, to take care of. Um, other than that, I've had no other issues, guys. I tell everybody that asks me that I love this smoker and I always recommend it to everyone. Um, who comes up and says, hey man, I'm thinking about buying a smoker. What do you think I should get? Uh, this is always the first thing um, that I mention to them. So at the end of the day, there's a couple cons. Uh, a couple of them are you know, due to user error. Um, other than that, I, I'm gonna go with what I said on my first video a few months ago, and that if you are interested in this type of smoker, uh, the versatility of it is amazing, being able to go you know, 180 degrees up to 700 degrees. Um, the being able to use real charcoal and real wood is huge for me because I think it gives a much better flavor than any pellet smoker out there. So if you're used to a stick burner, but you want to go to something that is, uh, you know, a little more on, on, automated, uh, this is definitely a good choice, I think. So uh, you can put the wood chunks inside of the hopper and you can also put them down in the uh, ash bin below. So you can get a bunch of smoke. I've seen guys put full logs inside the hopper. Um, so, I mean, it's really versatile. You can use briquettes, the lump, you can use straight up wood. Um, it's, just, it's just really cool. It's a super versatile drill. So if you're in your market and you know, you're on the fence about buying this thing, I hope this video helped you out. Um, let me know in the comments below any issues you've had or if you do have one what you think of it um, you know if you're a 560 owner the smaller version and and something's different than what I said uh, let me know so uh, if, if you are looking at this grill and you're not sure if you want to pull the trigger I would just say do it because I don't think you're gonna be disappointed um, oh you know what I will say one issue I did have was during uh, two grease fires I completely there's a, a little lid switch here that lets the computer know when it's open so the fan will stop running. Um, during my grease fires, uh, it melted, so twice. So that is a flaw that I don't like. You know, you shouldn't have anything, any components inside there that's gonna melt just because of a grease fire. But at the end of the day, I just took the wires from underneath and basically just taped them together so that I never have to worry about it again. I switched out, and Masterbuilt was great. They sent me new lid switches, no questions asked. Um, they were great about it, but for me, it's just easier. I've got an extra lid switch sitting in the in the bin here, um, but it's just easier just to leave it the way I have it jerry-rigged. So uh, other than that, guys, like I said, 
Uh, if you're on the fence about it, definitely pull the trigger. I highly recommend it. I love it. Um, I've made some amazing food on it. Uh, check out my other videos. I have several cooks uh, on the YouTube channel where I'm using it and I talk about it a little bit more. So thanks for watching today, guys. I hope this video helped you make a decision and uh, keep on smoking.